The posterior cord of the brachial plexus ends by giving the two terminal branches, the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. Radial nerve compression or injury may occur at any point along the course of the nerve. You can have very high radial nerve palsy at the axilla. You can have a high radial nerve palsy in the upper arm to the elbow. And you can have a low radial nerve palsy below the elbow. You can also have Wartenberg syndrome near the wrist. So let's start with the very high radial nerve palsy at the axilla. Nerve compression at the axilla, all motor and sensory function below the axilla will be affected with injury at this level. With injury to the radial nerve at the axilla, there will be loss of function of the triceps with weak elbow extension. The patient will experience wrist drop due to loss of function of the extensor carbi radialis longus and the extensor carbi radialis brevis muscles. The radial nerve gives three branches just above the elbow, give the brachioradialis, the extensor carbi radialis longus, and the extensor carbi radialis brevis. The longus and the brevis are wrist extensors. Here is a case of wrist drop due to loss of function of the extensor carbari dialis longus and brevis. Patient is unable to extend the wrist. There will also be a loss of finger extension. Put the wrist in extension and ask the patient to extend the fingers. Sensory loss will also be seen in the distribution of the superficial branch of the radial nerve, as you can see here in this picture. Causes of compression or injury to the radial nerve at the axilla, Saturday night palsy. Alcohol could be a factor as the person falls asleep with the back of their arm compressed by a chair back or a bar edge and the honeymoon palsy from another individual sleeping on one's arm overnight, compressing the nerve. Crutch palsy. Compression on the nerve from walking with crutches. How about high radial nerve palsy at the upper arm and around the elbow? Radial nerve injury can occur from compression or a fracture that can cause injury to the nerve within the spiral groove. And here you can see the spiral groove in this diagram. You can also have radial nerve injury from fracture of the distal third of the humerus. All motor and sensory function will be affected below the level of this injury. The radial nerve is vulnerable, usually due to a fracture of the humerus at the spiral groove. Injury may also occur below the spiral groove when there is a fracture in the distal third of the humeral shaft. So what happens when there is an injury of the nerve at the spiral groove? You're going to lose innervation and sensation through these branches. The same pattern of injury also will occur if there is injury just above the elbow. So what is holistein lois fracture? It's an injury to the radial nerve at the distal third of the humerus, and it will cause wrist drop and weakness of finger extension. Sensory loss will also be seen in the distribution of the superficial branch of the radial nerve. How about low radial nerve palsy below the elbow? Causes entrapment of the posterior interosseous nerve at the arcade of Froch. This is one of the most important causes. The arcade of Froch is a site of radial nerve entrapment, which may cause injury of the posterior interosseous nerve. 
Here you can see the superficial branch of the radial nerve and you can also see the posterior interosseous nerve and how the entrapment is at the proximal edge of the supernator. With injury to the posterior interosseous nerve, the patient will experience difficulty with extension of the fingers only. The patient will be able to dorsiflex the wrist. There will be no wrist drop. There will be loss of finger extension. Make sure you ask the patient to extend the wrist first when examining finger extension that will clearly show weakness of finger extension during the exam. Fracture dislocation around the elbow. Montagia fracture. It is a fracture of the proximal third of the anna with dislocation of the radial head. Montagia fracture can cause compression to the posterior interosseous nerve. So the motor function below this area will be affected by the injury. The posterior interosseous nerve is purely motor and no sensory loss. Neurovascular examination is very important because nerve injury, especially injury to the posterior interosseous nerve, is not uncommon. And if it happens, the treatment is usually to observe the patient. Examine the patient on presentation by examining the patient for loss of finger extension. Wartenberg's syndrome, entrapment of the radial nerve around the wrist. Compression of the superficial branch of the radial nerve around the wrist area. The pain is located approximately eight centimeter proximal to the radial styloid. Wearing a wrist watch may irritate the nerve. The nerve is located between the brachioradialis muscle, volally, and extensor carboridialis longus on the lateral side and the slightly dorsal. Here you can see the Wartenberg's point. Patient will complain of pain and parathesia on the dorsum of the hand with positive tenelis sign. How do you examine for the radial nerve function? You can examine the radial nerve by multiple tests. For example, testing the triceps. The patient is flexing the elbow and ask the patient to extend the elbow against resistance. You can feel and see the long and the lateral head of the triceps muscle. Also, for the radial nerve, we can examine the extensor carboridialis longus. Ask the patient to extend and abduct the hand at the rest against resistance. The extensor carboridialis longus muscle and tendon can be seen and felt. Also for the radial nerve, we can examine the brachioradialis. Flex the forearm against resistance with the forearm in neutral position between pronation and spination. The brachioradialis muscle can be seen and felt. 